Hey guys, I uh, hope you all are doing well out there. For today's assignment, I'm going to start by recapping um, a little bit from yesterday because we will be working on compromise again. So um, I'm gonna pull up a little document here. And so not only will we kind of see this, this idea of compromise again, um, but if you want to revise, redo, yesterday's assignment, I think this will help you with that as well, because this will kind of explain a little bit more detail um, how this part of our government works. So we, what the, the first half of yesterday's assignment was about was about the legislative branch, which is one part of our government that has people who create laws, right? And those people we typically call representatives because they are representatives from different states, right? Each state sends a certain amount of people um, to be in the, the national government, to be in the federal government, to help write those laws. Now, obviously a state would tend to want to have more representatives because the more representatives you have, the more people you have that are gonna vote for laws that are gonna help your state, right? So yesterday, the, the, the sort of issue that came up when they were trying to plan out how this was gonna work in the constitution was they were like, well, how do we decide how many representatives each state gets? Should we base it on population and the bigger a state is, they get more? Should we just give every state the same uh, number of representatives, no matter what their population is? Those are the two big ideas they were fighting over. And that was the, the two of the big things you were supposed to see in your assignment. Now, I just put an example up here. You can see we've got Texas, Illinois, and Maine. Texas has a population of 29 million. Illinois has a population of roughly 12.5 million and Maine has a population of roughly 1.5 million. Now I'm gonna have you do a stop and jot here in your notebook. And I want you to, just, to think who of those three states do you think would prefer to have the amount of representatives that each state gets be based on the population that each state has, okay? I'm gonna put my uh, mask over my eyes, take a quick nap, go ahead and pause and do that. And I will be back in a second. All right, it's a good nap. So you guys have uh, jotted that down and hopefully you guys all said Texas because Texas has the biggest population of those groups, right? And so a big state's gonna want it to be based on population because that means that state gets to send more representatives to work in Congress in the legislative branch. Those are just this, when you say Congress or legislative branch, it's the same thing, they're synonyms. Um, they're gonna send more representatives to Congress than many of the other states. So they're gonna get more of a say in the laws, okay? Uh, remember I mentioned there was another idea that we just give all the states the same amount of representatives. Again, I'm gonna take a quick nap, go ahead and pause the video and jot in uh, your notebook, which of those three states you think would like that plan the best? Okay. Hopefully you guys answered Maine. Maine has 1.5 million representative, or sorry, uh, people, their population living in their state. So if they, if it was based on population, they would have very few representatives, okay? So they would like it to just be equal because that just, that's better than, you know, Texas having way more than them and Illinois even having more than them. That's the best plan for a small state like Maine, okay? So, but those are two conflicting ideas, right? And this is a country that's trying to make decisions together. So they had to compromise to figure it out, right? And so the compromise you guys saw in the lesson was that they just made two houses in the legislative branch, one called the House of Representatives and one called the Senate. And they did, uh, they had uh, the two different ways of deciding how many representatives you've had. So in the House of Representatives, they did it by population. So Texas got a whopping 36 representatives. Now you probably don't know if that's a lot uh, until you see what the other states have, but you can see next that Illinois had 18. Okay, now that's not terrible, but it's still, it's half of Texas. So that's giving Texas a lot more say in the laws um, that are being made in the House of Representatives. Check this out for Maine. Two. Maine has two representatives in the house, right? Because it's a super small population. 
So in the House of Representatives, that means bigger states are going to get more, they're going to have more power, they're going to have more say. But to balance that out, we also had another um, House of Congress called the Senate, where everybody gets the exact same amount of representatives. Okay, so in, in the Senate, it's going to be two per state, so that there's a nice even uh, kind of say between all the states. Okay. So there's a compromise. And in fact, um, this is the third stop and jot I want you guys to do is I want you, since we talked about compromise yesterday, I want you to pause and, sorry, I'm looking for something different here. I, I'm, I'm not gonna nap on this pause and jot because I already got well rested in my last two. So I'm gonna try to balance this water bottle on my head. When I do that, pause and jot in your notebook what the definition of compromise is. Okay, that didn't work, but I'm assuming hopefully you paused it sometime uh, during that. If not, pause it now um, and do it. But for those who have paused it and now are back in the video, uh, the definition, hopefully you had something along the lines of, it's an agreement between two groups in which both sides have to give up some of what they want, but they also get some of what they want, right? Uh, so it's a way to make, to, to, it's a way to work together and come to a conclusion that helps both sides out. So uh, this obviously was a compromise because you did have one house that did say, hey, you're a bigger state, you have more people, we'll let you have a little bit more say there because it makes sense. But then we have another house that says, but hey, we don't want these small states to get totally run over. So we're gonna make it equal in this one uh, and, and make it so that you guys still get some say and some power. Okay, so uh, like I said, we're gonna do compromise again today. Uh, we're actually gonna talk about a different disagreement though. This disagreement is, was the biggest disagreement they had and it almost led to the constitution not getting passed. So I'm gonna to go to my vocab because it all kind of relates to the vocab. <clears throat> so today's terms that you really need to know, central government, that's just another term for federal government or national government. So all three government, or all three terms are synonyms, okay? They all mean the same thing. It's the government that oversees the whole country, right? Because again, you have state governments that still deal with issues in each state, but you also have this government uh, that is in charge of the whole country and makes laws that apply to all the states. So central government is just another term for that. And then the next two terms have to do with that battle I was talking about, right? That disagreement. There was one group who called themselves the anti-federalists. And those, those people believed that the constitution made the federal government too powerful. They're like, hey, we didn't want to be like England. We don't want that, you know, the situation with the King George III that we used to deal with when we were part of England. No. But there's another group who were called the Federalists, uh, and they didn't and, and they thought the Constitution was making it too powerful, right? So they were they were kind of didn't really want to pass the Constitution. The Federalists supported the Constitution. Okay. Part of it was they thought that we still need a strong federal government. Um, and they had a little bit more of a belief in the need of a strong federal government than the anti-federalists. But they also believed the constitution still prevented the government from being too powerful. So they just thought it was a nice balance. Like it was strong and they wanted strong, but they felt that there were things built into the constitution that kept it from being too powerful. And that's really what the fight is about in the lesson today. So there is going to be this reading you will do. Okay, you can see that right there. It says Federalists and Anti-Federalists. And in the reading, you are going to read about the specific things, just going a little bit deeper than what I've said, that made Anti-Federalists afraid uh, of the central government. And then you're gonna read some specific things about why specifically the Federalists really did think that the constitution worked and that we needed a strong government, central government. And then at the end, the compromise will be important for you to see how they, again, found a way to work together and get something done that gave each of them a little bit of what they wanted. Okay, so that's the reading. And then the assignment is called, who would say that assignment? And I gave you 10 hypothetical statements that you might hear somebody back then say. And for each one, you guys have to decide whether you think, does that sound like something a federalist would say? or something an anti-federalist would say. 
So you've got to read this document and really get a sense for what did the anti-federalists feel and what did the federalists feel so that you can look at these statements and, and you know, have a good sense for mm, that. That's definitely something a federalist would say or, you know, vice versa. OK, so you're going to you're going to put either F or AF in the blanks for which one, uh, which group that statement sounds like. And at the very end, you're going to write down what the compromise was that the groups came to and how both groups still got something they wanted, right? Because that's part of compromises. You both get a little bit of what you want. Okay. I believe that that is everything I wanted to cover. So we can go to work time now. Go ahead and do that reading and complete that assignment. And as always, let me know if you have any questions. All right. Have a good one, guys. Hey, guys. I just realized that I forgot to demonstrate the first um, one on the assignment, the first statement, and I was uh, planning on doing that. So I wanted to just do that real quick and add this on to the end. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the share screen up. So again, uh, remember that this assignment has a bunch of hypothetical statements. And the idea is that for each statement, you need to think, does that sound like something a Federalist would say or an Anti-Federalist? And so to do that, you want to really think about what did the Federalists believe? What did the Anti-Federalists believe? Okay. So when you go back through the reading, hopefully the things you'll pick up on is that the Federalists supported the Constitution. The Anti-Federalists didn't. The Federalists believed that um, a stronger federal government was often necessary. And they, often, they also believed that the Constitution still did prevent the federal government from becoming too powerful, whereas the Anti-Federalists uh, believed that they did, they did not want a super strong central government, which is another word for federal or national government. Um, and they believed that this current Constitution really was too powerful, right? So you just go through each one, like number one, and it says the Constitution gives the federal government just a few powers that are very well defined, okay? That sounds uh, more positive towards the Constitution, right? It's saying it's just a few powers, right? It's making it sound not that uh, overly powerful. And it's saying that they're well defined, which means that it's really just pointing out the things they can do. It's not going to allow for them to do extra stuff. So if you, you know, weren't sure if that was um, anti-federalist or federalist, you can even go back and reread them. And, you know, I'll just point out that, you know, right here under federalist, it says they wanted a strong central government. They believe that a strong central government was necessary. You kind of keep going. And then it says the federalists were not afraid of the central government created by the constitution because it had three branches. It points out what the three branches are. Um, and it says that they would limit each other's power. Right. So you're getting this sense here that ah, the Federalists felt that the Constitution already did a good job of making sure that the central government didn't have too much power. OK, so you would put F there for Federalists. OK, because that sounds like something a Federalist would say. OK, and then you just keep on going the rest of the way and do the best you can. All right. Hope this helps.